Well, good afternoon, lovelies. I want to share with you today in our little pep talk a question I received and then give my answer. You will find that it ties right in to the discussions that we've been having about our image, about speaking God's creative word. Hallelujah. I received this question from someone on my YouTube channel that had listened to one of our studies that we had done entitled, Is a Life of Wellness Possible and How Do You Achieve It? That name, your power of attorney. This was the question. Hi, Sister Ann, I have two questions. When you were commanding for your eyes to be healed, was there a difference when you first started commanding to when you were commanding starting to notice change? And was your inner state or awareness different? If yes, how? I thought that was a very good question. When you were commanding for your eyes to be healed, speaking to my eyes, commanding healing for them, was there a difference when you first started commanding to when you started commanding and seeing a change? Well, I think we could go back to Brother Caps about that because my experience was the same as his. What happened when he first began declaring the word of God? He said the Lord told him, Charles Caps, the Lord told him to find the scriptures that say what God is saying or has said about our circumstances and then to begin to speak them three times a day which he began doing because of his desperation and so he said within a week of faithfully doing that speaking these scriptures that little book of his, God's Creative Power for Healing, the verses in that little book are the verses that Brother Caps wrote out on a yellow legal pad, and he would carry them with him when he was working in the field, and then he would pull them out of his pocket, and he would declare them three times a day, more if he had more time in between his plowing of his rows or the work he was doing. He said that within a week of hearing himself speaking God's word consistently, his attitude began changing, began changing. I hope you heard that. It didn't say it totally flipped overnight. But his inward attitude, that awareness, I'm a failure. Nothing is ever going to work out. I'm never going to get out from underneath this debt. I am never going to see this throat ulcer going away. I will have to be drinking Maalox the rest of my life. I can hardly put food on the table. I can't afford to buy and renew my driver's license. Oh, he had the whole thing going on up here of why he was on his way to failure. How long had that image been setting up? Probably months. Oh, my crops are going to fail this year. I just know it. He said he declared that before he even began planting them. So that shows you what the image was in his mind. His attitude was one tending toward failure, toward lack. But he said within a week, 
of confessing what God said about him, his attitude began changing. That word began is so important. He began, he began to see glimmers of light. The heaviness, the dark thoughts began not being there and dominating all the time. All of a sudden, God's word started coming to the front. It started dominating the negative thoughts. He kept it up. And as he kept doing it, his inward attitude, the set of his sail, we talked about that a couple days ago. It isn't the strength of the gale that's blowing, but it's the set of the sail that determines which way the ship goes. Even nature teaches us that. So it's all here. The sail represents our inward image, our inward attitude. We've been talking about changing, getting this inward image changed, getting this soul prospering by getting a new image in it, by getting the word of God in it. He said within three months of doing that, his ulcer was completely healed. It's like the story of Lillian Yeomans that I did for you a couple weeks ago, a bedtime story of how she was delivered from being a slave to drugs. She said a nurse described her as a skeleton with a demon inside of her. She tried every cure that natural man could offer and nothing was working. Then she picked up her dusty Bible that sat by her bed where she was languishing in her bed. No strength, no vision, no hope for the future. She picked up her Bible and she began reading in the Bible. Just reading, just reading. She didn't have a Brother Cap's book on God's creative power for healing. She didn't have anyone to come and preach healing to her. She didn't have any videos to watch. She didn't have any books on healing that she could go by. It was just the word of God. And she began reading. And God's word is alive, just like we were talking yesterday. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It discerns your condition, even if there's something brewing there that you don't even know about yet. The word of God will discern that out, and it'll begin washing, washing it out. It'll strengthen your immune system. It'll be a, it'll be a preventative measure. So she just began reading the word of God because she was like Brother Cope, Cope Caps. She was at the end of every human help. And over time, she says, the demon of drugs lost his grip on me. And I don't even know when it happened. Hallelujah. She just got caught up. She noticed as she read the word, she felt better afterwards. So she'd want to read it more. She began to have more peace in her body than what she had. How is this happening? I don't know. But I just know after I read the word of God, I feel better. After I read my Bible, I feel better. And she just kept going back to it and taking that spiritual medicine more and more, even though no one had told her to. She had no one to give her pep talks. Well, Basically, it was the same way with me. I did have a teacher. I did have someone to help me. I did have someone to disciple me right after I was born again concerning the full message of the gospel. Jesus saves. Jesus heals. 
Jesus baptizes with the Holy Ghost, and Jesus is coming again. Jesus, our Savior, Jesus, our healer, Jesus, our baptizer, and Jesus, our soon coming King. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. I was taught right away my authority as a believer. But how? I, the person that led me to the Lord began teaching me what my rights and privileges were in him. Who I was in him. Who he was in me. <clears throat> I began to learn the power of confession. The power of words. Just shortly after Brother Caps was on the scene then. He was traveling full gospel businessmen's teaching and things. He actually was at our little town where I was saved at. The people that were the head of the full gospel businessmen's there had a meeting once a month and they had Brother Caps come. And I actually, a new Christian, I was in my first year of being born again and I got to see Brother Caps in person and came under the influence of his teachings and began learning the power of my words. So all of these things, I was, it's like I tell people, and I want to tell you, I'm not here to give you anything. I'm here to tell you what you have. I can't give you any more. Jesus has given you it all right here. As another example of it, this little piece of paper right here, you see, if I can get it up here close enough, and I know it's backwards, but it's the heading on a legal document that says last will and testament of Leola Payne Guler. That's my mother. This is her will, and at the top is the attorney's name that drew the will up. Well, if I want to know the benefits that I have received from my parents after they die and they, it's written in the will, what do I do? I go, I get my mother's will out. I don't get to see it. I haven't seen it before she died. You know how it is. They have the funeral and then people get together for the reading of the will. So after she passed away, I went to her house and her attorney came and we sat down and we read the will. He read the will to me. It was held in trust at the attorney's office until she passed away and then the will was opened. And my benefits were read to me. Is this not how it happens? So, as I went down through here, it says first, I give, devise, and bequeath all of my state, both real and personal, where, wheresoever situated, to so-and-so and so. She gave it to a bank so that it would go into a trust. <clears throat> I appointed the bank a banking association as executor of my will. In witness whereof, I have set my hand and seal this first day of November, 1989. She passed away in 1993. And so then I got to see the will. And I got to see what the benefits were that I received from my mother. Here I have my will, the last will and testament of Leola Ann Windsor. And in it, I have the benefits that I have for my children. I, Leola Ann Windsor of Lincoln, Illinois, Logan County, Illinois, being of sound and disposing mind and memory, do hereby publish and declare this to be my last will and testament, hereby revoking any and all former wills and so and so and so. Article 1, I direct my executor to so and so and so. Similar legal terms as my mother's will. Jesus has a will. 
it was, if you want to say, it was held in trust at the attorney's office until he died. And when he rose again and took his blood into heaven and put it on the mercy seat as proof of his death, it says in Hebrews, then his will went into force. And in his will is written all of our benefits that are yours and mine because of what he did for us through his death burial and what he's doing for us now after his resurrection. The Apostle Paul is the one that Jesus opened his will to. Galatians chapter 1, Paul said, The gospel that is preached of me didn't come from a man, neither was I taught it by man. But the message that I preach was given to me, revealed to me by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So if you want to know your benefits as the body of Christ, then read the letters of Paul. Peter has a small glimpse of these things, but primarily Peter is still ministering about the death, burial, and resurrection, being born again, then a little about being the new person. But even Peter said, our brother Paul writes of things that are some things that are hard to be understood, that people that are unlearned wrestle with. So even Peter admitted that Paul wrote of some things that he had a hard time understanding. But now we have come fully and Paul came fully out of the old dispensation and into the new dispensation, out of the old will and into the new will, the last will and testament of our Lord Jesus Christ. And most New Testaments begin that way. The, con the division between the Old Testament and the New usually has a page in your Bible, and that's what it says. Really, that page should go in front of the book of Romans. Because Acts does not tell you anything about your rights and privileges. The telling of your rights and privileges begins with the book of Romans. <clears throat> that's where we learn about our power of attorney in that name. We learn a little bit of it before that. But then it was delegated authority, delegated to you. But now that Jesus has died and risen, it has been given. It's your inheritance. Before it was a short time delegation to you when he sent the disciples out in his name to cast out devils and things. But once you're born again and have the spirit within you, now it's your right, it's your privilege to use the authority of that name. It's your privilege to cast out devils. It's your privilege to speak with the authority that Jesus has put in you, not just delegated to you. He has put it within us. But see, we don't know that. We have to read the will to find out. So thank God the lady that led me to the Lord got me reading my will, my rights and privileges in Christ. I had a lot of mental and emotional issues before I was born again. As I tell people, and if I don't stay, now take this jokingly, but sometimes even after all these years, I feel the warning of it. I, I used to say all the time, if it wasn't for staying in the word of God, I'd be totally crazy because my mental and emotion, my mind was so sinking in the kingdoms of this world. Oh, so sinking in sin. I was sinking deep in sin. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. And my soul was just being torn apart because of it. My mind was not sound, my emotions. I couldn't make right or righteous decisions. My life was just slowly, even in the natural then, disintegrating because of the images that were going on in my mind. 
And I notice now, if I don't stay in the word, those images, just, just fearful images, just think, well, this might happen and that might happen. And the more extended family you get and the more children you have, the more fears can want to haunt you. Fears for them. Fears. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You know, don't let fears come on you in these end times. They'll come, if they're going to come on the world and overtake the world, but don't let them come on you. So even now, I find it isn't that I'm crazy in one day, but the slip starts mentally and emotionally. And then all of a sudden, say I have a situation like this man is asking me about when he asked me about how I got my eyes healed. Say I have a situation come up. Also inside, then also inside myself, because my mind hasn't been diligent of camping around the word of God, mining the word of God, then that confidence in my soul starts slipping that I can say and see the mountain moved, that I can speak and my eyes will change. They will come back into line. They will see clearly. I can do it. My confidence in my ability begins to slip if I don't keep looking into the perfect law of liberty, who I am in Christ, reading my will, reading the things that have been left to me, learning then how to use them. Holy Spirit, help me to learn how to use the things that have been given to me. The whole armor of God, the name of Jesus, the stripes, help me to learn how to use the stripes that have been born for my healing. Hallelujah. So, when you were commanding for your eyes, was there a difference when you first started commanding to when you were commanding and starting to notice a change? Yes, there was. Because when I first started reading my will and learning about what my rights were as far as speaking to my body, speaking the creative word of God to hot wire healing for my body. As Brother Papp said here, and I want to go over here to his note. I have it out here. This again, we're still working with his video, How to Succeed When Others Fail. And if you haven't gone to YouTube and listened to it, I encourage you to do that. This was at 20 minutes into it. I even put the time stamps down as best as I best as I could. He said over the next year I confessed the word of God daily. Then he says I remember when being fully persuaded came to me. I remember when I became fully persuaded. In other words fully persuaded of what? Fully persuaded that the scripture was true. A confidence entered me, but I didn't have any more money than I had before. He was still hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. The natural circumstance had not yet changed, but he fellowshiped with the word of God he drank in the word of God. He camped around the word of God. It was his lifeline. He was a drowning man. He was going down for the last time. There was no other hope for him. So he obeyed the Lord, doing the sayings of Jesus is his primary point. When the father told him, get what I've said about your condition and speak that over yourself. And then his attitude began changing. He said, but over as he kept it up, the financial debt, this went away. The throat ulcer went away in three months. But the fine hundreds, two, three hundred thousand dollars of debt with no way to get rid of it. The pressure of that constantly like a mountain sitting on him. But he kept in the word. He kept obeying God. He kept speaking the word. Hallelujah. And as he did, his attitude started changing. And he said, and then as he continued, 
even though the mountain of debt was still there and nothing had changed in the natural. He said, I remember the day all of a sudden I crossed the line to where my soul, I put enough word in, I spent enough time with it, I got to where my soul became fully persuaded. <laughs> Hallelujah. I became fully persuaded. A confidence entered me, but nothing in the natural had changed. That's what happened when I got my eyes healed. I heard the teaching of Brother Caps. I was like him when the Lord told him, get my word and start speaking it. He started cold turkey, nothing at all. No confidence, nothing, feeling, no feelings at all. No even mental agreement with it. It sounded so foreign every time he said it. That's why he said, Lord, I feel like I'm lying. And the Lord said to him, how can you be lying if you're saying what I said about you? Hmm. So he kept at it. And that's what I did. When I heard the truth and I saw the words of Jesus, I saw that we, by his stripes I was healed. And I saw the words of Jesus that I could speak to this infirmity in my eye and command it to go. And in Romans 4, I could call things that be not as though they were. And even though my eyesight was not good, I could call it to be good. 2020 vision. I started confessing. I have 2020 vision. This has been several years ago. I would say 20, oh, a good 40 years ago. I just made up my mind. There wasn't anything wrong with my eyes. I wore corrective lenses. So, and it wasn't like they were painful or anything. But I just decided I don't have to put up with that anymore. And I don't want to wear glasses. I want to see my eyes healed. So I don't need glasses to see at a distance anymore. Well, I kept at it. And then when I first started saying it, I was like Charles Capps. I felt like I was lying because I could plainly see. I, I was plainly, I could plainly see. I couldn't see without my glasses. But you see, I knew God's word. I knew God. And the first verse that was given to me almost when I got born again, Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie. And I plainly saw the stripes of Jesus. I saw the movies about Jesus when I first got born again. I saw him whipped at the whipping post. I saw the stripes on his back as I watched those movies. I saw him nailed to the cross. I saw the blood flow. I, saw, I knew that was a historical fact that Jesus took the stripes on his back, was beaten. But I didn't know that it was for me, for my healing, until somebody showed me the verse. 1 Peter 2.24, Isaiah 53.5, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses, and by his stripes we are healed. And they showed me that that was for today, that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he did it in the Gospels, if God did it under the old covenant as Jehovah Rapha, if Jesus walked it out in the Gospels, if it was done in the book of Acts, then it's for today. It's the same. Jesus, the same. Hebrews 13, 8. Yes, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So all of these verses came together for me. And I stepped out then. You can have what you say. Speak to the mountain. Call things that be not as though they were. I was reading my will. I was finding out everything that belonged to me. And when I stepped out, just like it is, when you step out to do a new project you've never done before, and you got to measure two or three times to make sure that it's right. Because you feel funny. You're not comfortable doing it. When we start a new job, it's that way. But you stay with it, and pretty soon it becomes routine. You learn the lingo that goes with the job. You learn the skills that go with the job. This is the same way you're learning a new way of life. I was learning a new way of life. I was like a babe. I was learning how to walk. I was learning how to talk. I was learning how to think. I was learning how to see again. My mind was getting peace back. My emotions were settling down. The divorce that my husband and I were headed for evaporated. Hallelujah. Like a drop of water on a hot skillet. Thank God. Hallelujah. But when I first started, just like a baby walking, 
they're toddling along, they're falling down, they're not confident yet. I, then it means me, I knew it meant Jesus. I knew Paul did it, I knew Peter did it, but I didn't know it meant me, that I could speak to the mountain, that I could speak, I could speak to my eyes and change them. I could put on the resurrection power of God for my eyes and see them restored so that the deterioration that had taken place there would be gone. Was I confident at first? No, I wasn't confident, but I knew God was true, let God be true, and every other circumstance a liar. And I had faith toward God. Hebrews 6 is one of the basic doctrines is faith toward God. God. I had faith toward God. God was not a man that he should lie. He said, by Jesus stripes, I was healed. And he said, if I would agree with that and say in, in agreement with it and speak to my infirmity and command it to be removed and call my eyes to be normal 2020 vision, like he created them to be, I would have it. I saw the image of it up here. The word of God created created the image of normal eyes up here. So I got my tongue talking. I got my spirit. My spirit was believing it. My mind was starting to see it. I got my tongue saying it. Well, so he says, when you first started commanding, uh, was there a difference? When you were commanding your eyes, was there a difference when you first started commanding? to when you commanded and saw a change. Yes, there was, because the more confident I got, the more changes I saw. At first, I was like, you just try it. I'm just gonna try it. I'd ride along in the car by myself because I was too embarrassed to do it in front of my husband or my kids. So I'd ride along in the car. I'd put my fingers on my eye, my eye. No, going no. Normal vision, normal, normal in the name of Jesus. I have 2020 vision, 2020 vision, normal in Jesus' name. Eyes you see clearly, eyes you be normal. By Jesus stripes you were healed. I call you whole, normal, perfect vision in these eyes in Jesus' name. Well, I didn't say it then when I got started like I just said it because now I've got the confidence. But at first I didn't have it. I was, I was stepping out on the waters a little bit at a time. But you know what else I did? I kept learning about my authority. I kept learning about faith moving mountains. I kept learning about words, speaking words and seeing things happen. I kept learning about these things. So that's why there was a change when I started being more confident, then speaking, and my eyes started getting it. They didn't get it at first. I say it took me a good year completely because at first I was learning. I wasn't as confident when I spoke. I was getting comfortable with being the one who was doing the speaking to my body. I was getting comfortable talking to my body, just like Jesus talking to a fig tree. How would you feel right now if you went out in the yard and started talking to one of your trees? You'd be feeling kind of weird. Well, if you did it every day, after a while, you wouldn't feel so weird about it anymore. <laughs> oh, you get the point, right? So yes, there was a difference from when I first started speaking to my eyes to when I spoke and actually saw the change beginning. Then he said, was your inner state or awareness different? If yes, how? Because as Brother Cap said here, he confessed the word daily for a long time. But he said, one day, he said, I remember when I became fully persuaded. It builds up in there. It builds up. It builds up. And your mind and your emotions, your, even your emotions become fully, fully persuaded. Then they're not rocking back and forth and in and out and up and down and on a high mountain one minute and down in the valley the next. God wants your emotions stable in this thing. You're like a rock. Hallelujah. You're building a house on the rock. 
even circumstances. You get this pain, you get that pain. Nothing moves you. You're emotionally unmoved. You're mentally unmoved, regardless of what's going on in your body. And you keep speaking with that authority. You keep saying, no, you don't. Pain, you go from me in the name of Jesus. Body, you be normal today. And you'll mean it. And you'll see it come to pass. Jesus said, if you would speak and you'd believe that you can have what you say, you will have it. And I know none of you are going to go around and speak foolish, crazy, sinful things. We're talking about speaking healing here. So yes, my inner state changed. When I first started, I had a mental knowledge. I had an intellectual knowledge of all these different things, about my authority, about speaking words, about healing. It was just all intellectual. There was no conviction in it. There was no fully persuaded in it. No, I had to have the winds blow and the floods beat, and I had to fight back. I had to say, no, you don't. You're, and then as I fought back, I started getting, per I'd win this skirmish, and then I'd win that skirmish, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't fall to doubt this time. I wouldn't fall into the slew of despond that time. No, how I'd cast down reasonings and imaginations this time. Says, you're not going to get healed. Those eyes are going to be the same right now. I have to stand for my eyes every day. I'm adopted. I went to see my real mother. She couldn't even see me. I didn't know who she was. I went visited her shortly before she died. She couldn't even see me. She was completely blind. You hear that little voice in my head? Do you hear what it's saying? I hear what it's saying. And I'm right now saying, no, you don't. That's a wind that wants to blow. That's a flood that wants to beat. No, that's a wave that wants to crash on me. That I'm going to get to the point I won't be able to see my children anymore as I get older because this, I'm genetically predisposed to becoming blind in my old age. Nope, nope, no. I have no fear of it. I am fully persuaded. My eye is not dim. My natural strength is not abated. I am not moved off of that. By Jesus' stripes, I am healed. He opened the eyes of a man born blind. There wasn't any problem with eyes that Jesus couldn't heal. And he can keep me. He can keep my eyes. I see clearly. See, but I have to contend for it. Let us contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. You must contend for your wellness. You must contend. That's why you have the whole armor of God. That's why you have the word of God on the right hand and on the left. So you can cast down those reasonings. So you can put those feelings that want to be so negative and those thoughts that want to have despair. You can put them under. You can put them under your feet. You put them under your thumb. Say, no, I, the word of God says, the word of God says, the word of God says, God said it, that settles it, I believe it, and I'm going to declare it, and that's all I'm going to say. I have what God says I have, you know, in our church, and I'm sure you've seen it, heard it before. I don't have my Bible in here right now. Where did my little, oh, fiddle, it's clear back there. I don't want to go get it, my little Charles Capps book right now, but in my in my church, every time before we do the sermon, we be like John Osteen. Joel Osteen's dad. He used to do this, and I think maybe Joel does it too. I'm not sure. But John would get up there, and every time he'd get ready to preach, he'd hold his Bible up, and he'd say, repeat after me. Y'all with me? Let's do it. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Amen. That's it. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I can do what it says I can do. And that means speaking to a mountain. That means calling things that be not as though they were. Charles Capps, the Lord told him, my people are saying what they have instead of having what they say. Hoo, 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 hoo. That's an ouch. But it's so true. That is a powerful revelation from Jesus. And if we'll do that sayings, saying, you'll get out of call of saying what you have and you'll start having what you say. Powerful, powerful that is. 
Did you notice, did you start noticing a change in your inner state or awareness? Was it different? And if yes, how? Yes, it changed dramatically. I caught a glimpse of it when I first read the word. By his stripes, I'm healed. But then the more I stayed with it, the attitude began. The image became the attitude. Hallelujah. And now it's so branded in there that nothing moves me off of it. Nothing in my body, nothing in my finances. It tries. I'm trying to get my little caps book here. Oh, it tries. I have, I have, uh, situations just like all of you do i live in this world i don't have a i don't have a redeemed body yet hallelujah <laughs> when you started commanding or speaking healing for your eyes was there a difference when you first started commanding to when you started commanding and seeing a change and was your inner state or awareness different and how? Yes, is the answer. And the process was the same. When I first got started, I didn't speak with the authority I spoke with later. When I first got started, I didn't have that fully persuaded inner state or awareness that I passed into as I progressed along. And I whipped all of the little boogaboos, I call them, bugaboos under the bed that opposed the word of God. Yes, but, hath God said, are you sure? Why you? Why should you have it? I fought them all. You have to fight them all. You have to contend. You got to show your body that your words mean something. I want to read to you just a little bit here. I've gone on quite... I, don't intend to go this long when I get on these little pep talks, but I tell you, it just starts rolling out, and I just can't seem to get the plug pulled, the put in. I don't know how to put it. But before I go today, I want to read to you a little bit here again from Charles Capps, The Engrafted Word. God's Word is perfect spiritual law. Psalm 19.7. It is supernatural medicine. It works through the human spirit and is a spiritual cure. But like any other medicine, it must be applied on a regular basis. You must speak God's word to your individual circumstance or situation. Someone else can't do it for you. James 121 admonishes us to, quote, receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save our souls. Once the word of God is engrafted into you, it produces results in your body. When God's word becomes engrafted and infused into your spirit, it becomes a part of you. It cannot be separated from you. See, you're born again. You have the faith of God in here, but it's the word that that faith works with. That's why you've got to get the word in here. You're giving the faith that you have inside something to work with. You're giving the Holy Spirit something to bring to your remembrance. He can't bring it to your remembrance if you haven't put it in, if you haven't engrafted it, infused it. It becomes a part of you. It cannot be separated from you. It is not only your thought and affirmation. It is you. It is you. <laughs> oh, so true, so true. Then it is you, the word made flesh. The word taking on your flesh. Then your flesh will reflect the life of that word. 
when God's word containing concerning healing takes root, takes root in your flesh, it becomes greater than disease and healing is the result. The image that the word creates in you is already a reality in the spirit realm. When you speak God's word from your heart or your spirit, your place of authority, then faith gives substance to it. Your faith frames your world daily. Jesus made it very plain. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart's heart brings forth good things. In closing, I want to tell you, I felt like the Lord told me to point this out, that I studied not to get healed, but to learn about my benefits and the skills to appropriate them. I studied healing to learn not to get. As I learned, I got. But I didn't put the getting first. I always was a student. Study to show yourself approved unto God. I always had a student's attitude and I still do. I study to learn. And as I learn in a student's mode, the word gets engrafted. It's a each, that's why I read so slowly when I read the word of God. My word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. <laughs> I write it on my heart in living letter when I say it. I give the Holy Spirit time to emblazon it on the inside of me. I study it, every jot, every tittle. Oh, I studied to learn about my benefits and the skills then that I needed to appropriate them. How do I appropriate healing? I learn about healing. Then how do I appropriate it? What's the spiritual mechanic for putting it on, getting it manifest in my life? I studied so I would be equipped. I would be equipped to do, to speak, to live a life of wellness. You know, I was kind of shocking myself the last few days. It seemed like this little thoughts been running around on the inside of me. Do you realize that you're at your age, you have no fear of sickness or old age diseases? You have no fear of them. You don't live with a fear of getting older because of physical things. I said, that's right, Lord, I don't, do I? My days go by day after day, and not one thought goes through my mind of fear for my physical condition because I'm getting what at my age. Why? Because the of the engrafted word. And I have the answer to whatever m may want to blow on me flood against me. I got it right here. All I have to do is speak the word only and it'll roll back. It'll calm down. With long life, he satisfies me and shows me his salvation. Oh, how many times I've said that. With long life, and that doesn't mean a sick life. Because Jesus' stripes have no expiration date on them. That you reach a certain age and all of a sudden they don't work anymore. According to your faith, be it unto you. Have faith toward God. I live in faith toward God. I live in faith in what the stripes of Jesus have purchased for me. And my husband does too. Bless his heart. Uh, uh, oh, it's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new day in the Lord. It's a new day. 
It's a new day. It's a new day in your life. This is the day that the Lord has made, the day of redemption, the day of provision, of perfect protection, of healing, of soundness, of mind, of deliverance. Oh, it's a new day in the Lord. Oh, a day of joy and gladness and victories to be won. Oh, hallelujah. I just get out of bed chomping, chomping, drooling at the mouth to get victories today over the law of sin and death, over the whispers of the wicked one in my mind, over the emotional turmoil he may want to give me through my circumstances. Oh, over the threats of Goliath. Praise God. Who are you to defy the armies of the living God? We are the body of Christ. We are the army of the living God. Oh, Jesus, help us to get our big boy pants on, to get our big girl britches on and rise up into the fullness of who you are in us and who we are in you. <laughs> well, I think the plug just got put in. I had a friend one time, he said, when the fire goes out, shut the blower off. <laughs> oh, well, Jesus got a hold of my life and he won't let me go. Mm -mm. Jesus got into my heart, he got into my soul. Well, I used to be oh so sad, oh, but now I'm free and glad. Because Jesus got a hold of my life, and he won't let me go. Oh, I remember how I used to be living in sin. I thought or another my way through life, laughed my way through life, and I got totally lossy. Shut the blower off. <laughs> Oh, I'm like Brother Hagin today. Done preach myself happy. And I don't hardly want to put the period at the end of the sentence, but I got to go. Love you all. Oh, I pray you've been pepped by this little talk today. Hallelujah. Chat later. <laughs>